Hello Internet and welcome back. This is the fourth installment in the series about the laser cutter restoration and uh, now we are going to assemble the machine again. So in the first three episodes I have shown you how I washed the machine and tried to clean everything as good as I can. Um, so now we have to put everything back together again. And what you see here are all the parts for the X and Y gantry setup. We're going to put that together in just a minute. We're going to get some new belts as well. I'm going to skip the air assist system. It's not really needed for checking out the functionality of the machine. But before we do that, I will show you how I put the Z axis back in the machine. So cue the music.
So that was how I put the Z-axis back into the machine. I got the lid back on, I got the front door back on, and now it's time to assemble the X and Y gantry setup. And I talked with the local uh, sales office and we had a good discussion about what I can do and what I cannot do. Uh, so this is obviously not the universal production facility. I don't have access to all the same calibration machines and uh, jigs that they have. I'm fully aware of that. I have some ideas. So we will try to see how far I can get with, uh, with just the tools I can create on my own and the stuff I have in my workshop. So let's get to it. It's not really that complicated to get stuff back together again. We just have to do the tear down video in reverse.
it's time to assemble the belt. And we have this little clamp with two screws on its side. These two screws will fit inside the lens housing, so we have to orient it properly. To be able to attach, or attach the belt together, we have to attach the belt like this. So I did made a mistake during this. So I just cut the belt to the same length as the original one. And that, that is a problem because now it will be really hard for me to get inside uh, this clamp here. Uh, so what I did, I took off the, the idler and now I can insert the belt just as much as I remembered that it had before. So it had a little bit of slack on the other side here. And now I can tighten down this clamp, no problem. And then I should be able to put down the pulley again, or put back the pulley again. Let's see how that goes. So we tighten down the clamp first. Now it's time to get the, the, the idler back in. And that could be a problem, but we'll manage. Also, the idler is not symmetrical, so there's a, a wide side here. We have to have that upwards. All right, that went well. So the next thing we can do is we can tighten this set screw in order to put some extra tension and see the, the tensioner bracket here is moving outward, which means that we are extending the belt ever so slightly. So how much should we do this? Well, if we take a small weight and try to measure the, the pull, the force of this pull here, then on the middle of the arm, here we should pull for this specific model i think it's 150 or 125 grams of force uh, when when the belt is half an inch away from from the gantry here i don't have a weight that can measure this low so i will spitball it here i'll just put a little bit of extra tension in again now we are just doing a rough mechanical calibration i can adjust this later on if we have the need. The next thing we can do is we can attach the lens housing. The lens housing has three uh, wheels. We should change these, they actually need to be changed. Uh, I don't have them and I, for the testing purposes it's not really necessary. What's important to notice is that the lens housing, the third wheel here is spring operated. So we can just compress that spring and then we should be able to get this lens housing into place very easily, like so. So now it's here, we can reattach the belt bracket and we should be good to go.